Hello! It is summer again. High time for process. This time I'd like to master a new model. I call it a log-shaped purse. It is easy to weave and at the same time nice looking and rather practical. I've experimented with a few options. Found the one I like most of all and it is the one I'd like to share with you today. At first you weave a cloth, handles. Here you can see one type of handles. It is an easier option. We are going to weave it. As well, I've tried weaving a round hole to use as handles, but it is too hard to make it perfectly smooth. That's why I've chosen the option which allows weaving smooth handles for our tutorial. They are as practical as those are. So you weave a cloth and handles. Besides, you have to create a round sidewall of tubes, a so-called pancake, sew down to the cloth and get a purse like this. These ones haven't been trimmed yet. Let's get to know the details so far. So let's weave a cloth, the basic segment of our purse. As usual, I've experimented a bit. For this purse I've used doubled poles and single tube stripes. I've woven it in a normal printed cotton technique. Alternated pink and brown poles. The number of poles is odd. In our case there are 19 of them. I'll show you the way I made turns. This item has been woven with single tubes. Here I felt like trying to be with double ones. White poles, double dark brown and reddish working tubes. As for this clothes, I'm weaving it in a different color option. Besides, I've experimented with working tubes here as well. The poles have been woven of copy paper sheets cut into halves lawnwise. That's why the poles are rather rigid and tough. I don't moisten them. The light working tubes uh, have been made of clean newspaper and paint and colorant mixed with primer and some varnish. As for the dark working tubes, they are made of normal newspaper with printed letters. I've tried to paint them cornflower blue. If you take a thorough look, the letters can be seen a little, but in general I'm quite satisfied with the way it looks. I mean newspaper tubes can be used for this purpose as well. All my tubes are different, but anyway I hope the item will be fine. I've run out of book paper, however I've got lots of ready newspaper tubes, so I'm making use of them too. So, I weave using a normal printed cotton style technique. As I've already said, I've got 19 poles, the working tubes are moistened. Recently I found a piece of advice at our website forum and made use of it. They recommend to add some hair balsam into the water you sprinkle your tubes with. So I've done. And I have to agree that the tubes really have become softer and easier to weave with. The matter is, I've mixed many different paints before I've got this corn blue color of tubes, which has made the tubes too rigid and inconvenient to work with when just moistened with normal water. So I've recollected this piece of advice and added some hair balsam to the water.
Indeed, it has made the tubes more flexible. So, I'm weaving in a normal printed cotton style technique up to the end of the row. Now make a turn. The purse edge is going to be notched. Take a look, please. The edge is notched due to the turns I make. So, I've made a turn and continue weaving. And the same thing here. Make a turn which results in such a tooth. Here goes a light tube, followed by a corn blue one. I lengthen a tube behind a pole. This side is going to be a front one. So if there are some minor failures seen from the wrong side, there is no problem. So I've shown you the way I lengthen, after which I weave a light stripe in a normal printed cotton technique, up to the end of the row, and a cone blue one. The tubes are wet and flexible. Continue this way. There's nothing new about printed cotton technique. I've shown you the way I make turns. It's up to you to select your purse size. Mine is 32 cm wide, which is about 13 inches, and it has to be 60 cm long, about 24 inches. So I still have to weave about 4 cm more. After which we can start weaving handles. So let me show you once again the way I make a turn. Please note that I use skewers for barbecue at the edges. Even though the poles are rather tough, thick and easy to weave, anyway the cloth tends to be narrowing, so skewers can be helpful here as well. So I've finished, made a turn with a light tube. Weaving the printed cotton style technique up to the end of the row. As for a corn blue tube, it makes a loop like this. And it's time to lengthen the tube again. Besides, I'd like to draw attention to the fact that it's better to avoid lengthening at the very edges. It is a weak point, so try your best to avoid lengthening tubes at the corners. The best point to connect two tubes, two tube segments, is behind a pole at the wrong side. So continue. So the 60 cm long cloth has been woven. Now let me show you how to finish a printed cotton cloth neatly. Please take a look. I've already hidden the blue tube tails. Now I'm going to do the same thing with light tube tails. Turn the item round and just tuck a tail in, kind of creating the second layer. Be careful to avoid compression. Cut a tail and fasten it with glue. In this item I use dragon glue instead of normal school glue, since the item will be subject to much deformation. So the cloth has been finished in a neat way. Let's cut the tails. I've already fastened them with glue. Pull the skewers out, we don't need them anymore. The next stage is creating a handle. It's up to you to choose the type of a handle you prefer. There are going to be some pop-up links to tutorials on handle making. 
We've got a rather big collection at our website already. However, I've got to warn you that you can see the links only in case you watch the tutorial either at YouTube channel or at our website. The videos from odnoklasniki.ru, vke.com or other social networks do not support this function. That's why if you'd like com complete information on what we propose, I'd recommend you to watch video at youtube.com or at our website. There you can see everything I'm talking about. So, the next stage, a handle. First of all, I bend the poles. In order to bend them, I've got to moisten them at first. To be more precise, I moisturize them at the very bottom only. If I moisten them all alone, they will be hard to tuck in. So, at the bottom I moisten and press them thoroughly. I've calculated that I have to tuck in 5 poles from one side and 5 poles from the other side. The neighboring two poles will be used to create a handle. As for the central poles, I have to tuck them in too. Let me show you the way I tuck the poles in. I do it like this. These rigid poles are rather hard to tuck in, but anyway you can do it. Well, what I mean is a pole has to cover the top row. Try to be very careful. Since to moisturize and the poles become more flexible than without. If you moisten the pole all alone, it would be too hard to lead through. So one, two, three, four. There's one more pole left. Turn the item round and in order to finish this corner I tuck in those poles which are supposed to cover the top row from this side. Well, it is easier to work on a flat surface. One, two, three, four, five. Be attentive to avoid grabbing any extra poles, otherwise you'll have to unweave it. Those who mastered the skill of decorating paper items with leather or any other materials can trim this edge in a nice looking way. Tuck in the five poles in the same very way at this corner. From this side I've already shown you how to shape a handle. Take a look please. I haven't cut these remainders yet, just tuck them in. Here the tail sticking out from both sides. As for the handle, I've already shaped it here. I've added some more tubes, made it denser, fastened with glue and prepared for entwining. So, I've cut and glued the tails. Now let's entwine the handle. I propose you one possible option, but as I've already said, you can choose the one you like most of all. Start weaving 8 shaped, reach the point of connection and continue wrapping both poles together. As a result, you are going to get a handle like this. It shaped at the bottom and just wrapped at the top. There's nothing difficult about it. We've got all of these handles at our website. The next stage is creating sidewalls. In order to create sidewalls, you have to roll up such pancakes. It can be either single colored like here, 
It is subject to further decoration or spiral pattern like this. I personally prefer the latter one. As for the purse we are currently making, I am applying it to it an option like this, random light and blue coils. In order to create a spiral patterned sidewall like the one I like, I have curled two tubes at a time. Most of all must know this technique already, but I am going to show it for newcomers already. First of all, you start with curling a blue tube, adding some glue meanwhile. In this case, I use thick glue to avoid spilling it. Then I join a light tube and continue curling both of them simultaneously. Well, surely your hands get dirty while working like this. But I personally keep a duster nearby to clean them from time to time. If you curl two tubes at a time like this, you get such a snail-styled result. As you can see here, I've started with a light tube, then added a pink one and continued rolling them both together. Afterwards, you have to flatten the pancake against your desk. What's the peculiarity? If you remember, I've been weaving the purse with different types of tubes. As for the pancake, I've selected a light tube of a similar color, which is identical in thickness to a blue one. Only in this case you can get a smooth pancake. One more thing I'd like to draw your attention to is we'll have to attach this pancake to the cloth afterwards. That's why I made the extreme coils dark. I mean, I think of how to attach it beforehand and select the color correspondingly. In this case, I've used a thin ribbon to attach the segments to each other, so I've tried my best to fit the colors as similar as possible and to make stitches smooth to make it neat looking. So, the circles are ready. The two circles will be used as side walls and the third one as a separation in order to divide the pearl space into two sections. In order to shape the pearl roundish, I've primed the cloth with cool glue mixed with water thoroughly from both sides. After which I've shaped it round two, round two three liter bottles. I've been shaping it while wet. Well, you can help yourself with a rolling pin, of course, but actually it shapes well enough without when most moist. So, I've left it in a wet state for a while like this. Placed a poly lane here and fastened the edges with clothing clips. A lane is required to prevent two sides from sticking together. So it is the way my workpiece has dried. After which I sew the side circles down to the very close. Here I am using this cord, the most similar in color I found. As for this purse, I have sewn the segments together with the help of a ribbon. Well, your main task is to fit colors and to make smooth stitches. In my case, the ribbon wouldn't be would be too bright. That's why I've chosen a cord. As for the ways of attaching, surely I'd prefer to avoid the stitches. But I'm going to use the purse actively. That's why the glue alone wouldn't be enough. So I sew the sides down to the main cloth, after which you can cover the edge with glue for better fastening. There's one more essential point I'd like to draw your attention to. 
In order to prevent the circle layers from detaching, I make stitches of different lengths. For example, with one stitch I grab two coils, with the next one I grab four, and continu continue sewing the segments together this way, alternating the number of coils I engage. But don't forget to leave a gap and soon for a hand to get into the purse comfortably. So the sides have been sewn down to the purse. You can varnish the item now. As an option you can separate the purse space into two sections. As for me, there is an additional section for small things like a cell phone and keys needed. For this purpose, you can just glue an additional circle into the purse. Well, you can sew it down as well if you like to, but I believe strong glue is quite sufficient for this very purpose. The only thing left is to attach a wide ribbon in order to be able to carry the purse on your shoulder. Before sewing the ribbon to the purse, I have cinched the edge. Then I have made a few stitches and then fastened it with glue. This way I've got a long handle attached to the base strongly enough. I've already tried this purpose this purse today. I've taken it to my working place. It has proven to be rather comfortable. Here is an additional section. As for this purse, I've attached a long handle to it to be able to carry it on my shoulder as well. In case you have any additional devices, you can decorate your purse with more accessories. However, if you have no special equipment, even the few accessories like a button, elastic thread and the ribbon as a handle are quite enough. So may you enjoy inspiration, persistence and imagination.